Hi everyone, my name is Paul Cooper and I'm the manager of Totes and Notes. And this week I'm bringing you the fourth video which covers the third clause all of your business ventures need. And today we're covering salaries and distributions. So let's go ahead and get started. So when it comes to salaries and distributions, basically all of us want to get paid. And through these terms and clauses, we will determine who gets paid, when, and how. So you might be thinking, well, we're creating a business here. Why are we going to have salaries? Well, sometimes you're going to need to have salaries, and it's going to generally be based off the activity level. If you have two people that are investing, and they could be investing the same amount, but if one person's also doing all the work or the majority of the work, then they should probably be compensated for that extra time and effort. You could give them a larger equity position or a different distribution of the profits, but in a lot of cases, you're probably going to want to do a salary especially since some business classes are going to require you to have a salary. Now, most uh, pass-through entities like an LLC or sole proprietorship, you wouldn't necessarily need to have a salary because any type of distribution that you receive will, be pay will have taxes paid on it by that person. But in other instances, uh, some types of C-Corps and S-Corps, you may be required to take a salary. Um, I believe with S-Corps, you're going to require to take a salary. You can't take everything into distribution. And so it, you have to be careful with that to make sure that you're taking a salary that's appropriate for, where you're, one, where you're living, and then, two, the type of work you're doing. So you could be doing something that would pay a lot in New York City, and it may not pay as much in Kansas City or some other smaller town. And generally, you're going to want to have your CPA or some other type of financial advisor or professional guide you on that. I have distribution equals rich people money. Now that's a little bit tongue in cheek because unfortunately uh, most businesses don't succeed in the short term let alone the long term. I think what is it, like a well over 80 percent of businesses shutter their doors after five years or within the first five years. But basically distribution is the type of payment for a business owner or shareholder. And so that's that's going to be more applicable to us. Um, so unless you're going to work directly in the business, you may not have a salary. And even if you do work directly in the business, that may be how you earn your equity position in the business. So let's move on and we'll get further in detail into distributions. So types of distributions and complexity. This can get very, very convoluted, complex. Um, you can have, you, it can be like a comic where if you were to look above your head, you would see a bunch of uh, question marks floating in the air because they can get really weird and really complex very, very quickly, depending on what you're investing in and how they want to structure it. Distributions are usually going to be in the form of cash, shares, or physical products, and those are going to go to the shareholders, managers, owners, whatever terms appropriate for the type of business you have. And those can come to you in a lot of ways. Usually it's going to be in the form of uh, cash, and it's a lot of times, to keep it very simple, it's going to be a percentage of the profit. So a very, very basic partnership where the partners, there's only two of them, and they're doing, they've broken up the work evenly, and they both brought the same amount of money to the business, then what they're probably going to do is do a 50-50 type of profit split. So they'll also want to determine when they'll take profit splits, how much money if they have any type of milestones that they need to reach before they get that and uh, but but very basic would be hey you get this percentage i get this percentage or everyone gets this certain amount of percentage and generally as a as an owner you're and especially if you're an owner operator going through a business that's what you want you want a large percentage of the profit because you're taking most of the risk you're spending most of the time on it another common uh, type of distribution will be a return of capital so what will happen is everyone's getting paid until they're reimbursed their initial capital investment so if everyone invested a hundred thousand dollars and there's ten members then that means the first million dollars in profits going to be distributed evenly to all the members until they've received their initial investment back and this and you'll probably have some type of schedule set up because you know you wouldn't want necessarily want oh we just made five thousand dollars in profit you wouldn't necessarily want to divide that up you may want to keep that in the business to pay for further expenses another really popular type of distribution would be a preferred return and this is generally going to be in the form of an roi percentage a return on investment percentage that you'll get from the profits before any other type of profit distribution is worked out so let's say you have a business 
that has you're, you're running it and then you have 10 investors and you're offering your investors we'll just we'll say 10 percent because it's easily easy to calculate they all your investors are getting a 10 percent preferred return first so that means that they're getting 10 percent on their investment money from the profits before anything else is calculated so let's say the business makes 20 percent then that means the first half of profit is now going to the investors because if you made 20 percent 10 percent is half of that so they'll get paid that first before any other type of distribution set up so if the business only makes nine percent then the investors are getting all the profit and in fact a lot of times the preferred return is going to be set up to where if you can't pay that preferred return it's going to be owed to the investor further down the line so when you just start a business off you may not be able to meet that uh, preferred return for the first six months to a year but it's generally going to be owed to the investor that has that preferred return that way they're just not giving up um, their preferred return because the business isn't profitable for the first six months to a year. It's pretty good for the investor just because it is a slightly more secure position. They don't have to worry about um, not getting paid their portion if the business is profitable because they should be paid first. Again, be very careful. It is not guaranteed you're just getting paid first from profits, but you're not guaranteed that there are gonna be any profits and that you're gonna get your money back. So be very careful. And this is can be used inclusive or exclusive of other types of dif distributions so it could be the only part of the distribution it could be you could have multiple setups or it gets really complex you could have a 50 50 split with someone but then they also have a re preferred return and so that could be inclusive or exclusive and so so let's say you have an investor that's getting 50 percent of the profits plus they also have a preferred return of five percent so they're going to get the first 5% and depending if that preferred return is inclusive or exclusive will determine if they get half of the total profits or if they're getting 5% and then half of what's remaining. So you need to be careful how that's worded. So it could end up being that if they had a 5% that's exclusive, then they would actually be getting a 5% return plus 50% of what's left so they would actually be getting more than 50% of the total profits. And so generally you're not gonna wanna do that because now that person's getting more than half of the profits plus a preferred return. So most of the time it's gonna be what they call inclusive of it. So what it would do in that situation is, so let's say the business only makes 8% profits that year, 50-50 of 8% would be 4%, but they have the preferred return of 5%. So now they're actually getting more than 50% of the total profits because of that 5% preferred return. So it's helping to ensure that they get at least a minimum profit during those years and or those times when the business is lean. And then those years when the business is going really well, then they're just getting their half and they're not getting extra. So you gotta be very careful how they word it. And I wouldn't be surprised if I reverse the term. So be very careful folks and always get a professional to look things over. Um, and help you out when you're when you're really doing some of these things because it, it can get very complex really quick and you don't want to accidentally um, have someone get screwed out of what's owed to them whether it's you or your investors so let's go to the next page hello mr and mrs griffin now i know you've been here all day so if you'll just sign this contract without reading it i'll take your blank check and you won't not be not loving your timeshare before you know it all right i was just playing that little clip there to uh kind of show what can happen when you don't understand what's going on people will use a lot of uh special languages uh there to try to confuse you i believe he had a triple negative in there to really confuse the uh, griffins and if you follow the show at all um you know it doesn't take much to confuse peter but anyway, so just, it's to help iterate that this stuff gets complex really quick and you need to be very confident that you know what's going on. Have someone look at your documents for you, have them help you write it up, and don't be pressured by a, time, by a really short timeline um, because if it's too short for you to really understand and feel comfortable doing it, then you probably just need to pass. But onwards and upwards to the other really complex stuff of uh, distributions. So here are a few terms you may see. They've got waterfalls. You, this is really common. Um, you also hear it called uh, stair steps, but generally waterfalls is the more uh, popular term. You have hurdles and milestones, different shareholder types. We already talked a little bit about inclusive or exclusive when it comes to preferred returns and profits. 
and then you'll have something called a catch-up tranche every now and then. Let's go over uh, waterfalls real quick. You'll see this very frequently. In fact, if you've ever, uh, if you know of Grant Cardone, he's a big sales guru, and he also does a lot of commercial real estate. A lot of the time, the way he has it set up though for profits are, is he gives a preferred return to his investors, and then he has a waterfall on the back end. So let's, uh, we'll do a 10% return for simplicity's sake. And then on the back end, once they meet certain profitability goals, then that'll trigger another step in the waterfall that'll determine how much extra profit the investors get and how much Grant and his management team gets. And I've got a little Excel spreadsheet I'll bring up here shortly that'll hopefully help illustrate it. But let's cover the other topics real quick. You have hurdles or milestones, which are similar to a waterfall in that um, when certain things happen, then you kind of follow a table and that'll determine what happens. So a lot of times what will happen with milestones is you'll be like, hey, we're going to keep all the profits in the company until we make $100,000 in profit. Because once we make $100,000 in profit, then if we, we should know that the business is doing well and it's healthy. So if we meet $100,000 in profit, we're going to take half of that and give it in distributions to the owners, shareholders, members of the LLC, whatever. And they'll have that set up so then basically you're not waiting for necessarily a certain date. You're waiting for a certain performance milestone to happen and then that triggers some type of distribution. And so you'll see those pretty uh, pretty often, especially in um, newer kind of big growth businesses because uh, they may want to keep a lot of the money for the business in the business and so they can help fuel their own growth, which is very smart and very prudent. But at the same time, you don't want five years to pass where all that money stayed in the business and you haven't started paying your shareholders and the investors. Another thing you'll see every now and then are different shareholder types. You'll have different classes of shares. Um, and and what will happen here is basically you'll, maybe you'll have the first round of investors and they come in and they get all the Class A shares. And they get more money, they get paid first, and they get voting rights. And then you'll have Class B or C shares where they don't get to vote, but they can invest with a smaller amount of money per position. And they get a smaller uh, amount of the shares. And maybe those shares are a little bit more liquid, whereas the Class A people can only sell with, permit, with majority vote approving it. Again, sky's the limit. Uh, well, really, it's more your imagination is the limit on a lot of this stuff. Inclusive, exclusive, uh, we've already talked about that. Hopefully, I didn't confuse everyone. Hopefully, I didn't misspeak. And then the catch-up tranche, basically what that is is an individual or maybe even individuals will get all the profits until they've caught up with everyone else or to a certain dollar amount, and then it'll go back to some other type of normal distributions. It's hard to tell why you would necessarily do that unless someone was just willing to let their money stay in the business to help the business grow. Maybe maybe three of the four investors need money now, but that fourth investor is like, no, I, you know what, I can wait. I would rather my portion stay in the business and help fuel growth, but no one else is getting a distribution until I at least get reimbursed this share first. That might be something that happens. Um, you could have it set up to where you let people buy in through a certain time period and maybe that time period six months to a year so everyone else invested early on in the year and they've been getting payments but then if you invest halfway in the year you're still entitled to some of those payments so maybe uh, that person then is given all the profits to get caught up with the uh, with the people that have already invested previously most of us probably aren't going to use a catch-up tranche or anything um, but i but i saw it and it, and it was kind of interesting it, you may see it you may not so let's go look at our diagram for the uh, waterfalls, and hopefully I can do a pretty decent job of trying to uh, explain to you what of the waterfall setup is. All right, so here's my design. It's nothing super great. Unfortunately, I was having a really hard time finding good examples. Most examples were in Excel. I, was, I could not find a very good illustration. Um, and I've seen a few in the past that, uh, that have done a pretty good job of explaining it. Um, hopefully with my color coding here and walking you through, you'll kind of understand it. So... The blue lines here are going to be our stair step downs or our waterfall, and that's blue for water. And then these brown lines are supposed to kind of indicate the floor. Those would be the rocks for each step of our waterfall. So we're starting at the top. And so this is going to be for all profits or ROI under 10%. So if the business makes 
9.9% or really anything under 10%, then half of the profits would go to the investor and half of the profits are gonna go to management. Very basic 50-50 setup. Now, let's say our profits um, go past 10% or now they're 10% to 12%. So in this range, we now do the 40-60. So it's 40% to investors, 60% to management. But the previous step still applies. So anything before 10% is still split 50-50, and then everything 10% to 12% is now split 40-60 in favor of management. So our next step in the waterfall would be anything greater than 12% up to and including 14%. So now on this step, only 30% of it goes to the investors and 70% to management. Now we're getting to the last step of our waterfall. So 14% and greater, 80% of that's gonna to go to management and only 20% of it's gonna to go to investors. Now you may be asking, why would someone do this? How does this setup help? A lot of times you're gonna see that as the profitability increases, a larger percentage of those profits will now go to management or the business that's uh, running things. And this is to help incentivize them to do a better job, which makes sense. If the business is doing better, it's probably due to the management team and the people that are there, there day to day working on the business. And so it's a good way besides salary to get people motivated to do a better job. This very well could be backwards. You're probably never going to see it that way, but it's it's not set in stone to where it has to be this way, but you're generally going to see it favoring management as the profit levels increase. So each previous step applies to that range of profits. And it may not even be an ROI percentage. It could be a dollar amount. It could be the first $50,000 is 50-50, and then, then, then 50000 to 100000 it, it follows that, and you could work that way. Uh, but generally, you're going to see a percentage, and then it's going to be broken down by percent. It could be uh, broken into dollar amounts, um, or it could be set up to where it's a waterfall type of bonus amount to management. Uh, but this is probably the most basic and common that you're going to see. So it gets a little bit more complex um, depending on what they do and all the other different incentives to management or the investors. But a basic waterfall hopefully isn't that hard to follow. Hopefully I've done a good job here. I wish again the, that I could have found a better graphics for y'all, but this is this is what we have. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I, I'm more than happy to try to explain what I can to you. But anyways, that's all I have for this week. Again, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. And it just goes to show, look, I am not a professional. I'm not an attorney or a financial advisor or CPA. Make sure you consult the correct professional when you're doing this stuff. Again, this is just hopefully basic education, some things that I've learned. Hopefully it helps get your wheels uh, spinning so you kind of understand what's going on and what questions to ask. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Next week, I will be bringing the fifth video, the fourth clause all your business ventures desperately need, and that's going to cover death and disability. Um, two very important things that need to be covered, and unfortunately, no one likes to talk about. I appreciate your time, and you all have a nice weekend.